Well, bundle up, get cozy, sip your hot cider. If you didn't get any hot cider, you missed it coming in. You should have. I hear it's delicious. Well, I want to talk about the best Christmas ever. And I want to ask you a question. And here's my question. What if this Christmas, Christmas 2020, could be the best Christmas ever? And that's my hope for you. That's my prayer for you. My journey with Christmas, my first 15 Christmases were fun. I was with my family, with my dad and my mom and my four siblings, or actually two of them came along later on, but you know, with, with two siblings, then three siblings, then four siblings, and that was fun. We exchanged gifts, and we each got $5 to buy about 20 gifts, and we went to a place called Pick and Save and got these. It's like, it's like the dollar store, but not nearly as fancy. And so we would get these little gifts, and we'd exchange gifts, and there was a tree, and there were lights, and there were stockings, and I mean, we did everything. It was all there. We, all the Christmas stuff was there, except for one little piece that was missing. Take a wild guess. Jesus. He wasn't part of my first 15 Christmases. I didn't grow up in a home where we talked about Jesus, where we read the Bible, where we believed in any of that. And then the summer of my year between my sophomore and junior year of high school, I met Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Savior of the world. He entered my heart. I remember that that first time I prayed. It was my very first prayer. I said, God, if you're really there, and if Jesus is really who these people were telling me, these these Christians were telling me about this guy, Jesus, I said, Jesus is who he said he was, and if he was God who came, and and if he died on the cross for me, and if he paid the price, and if if I can... be his, and he wants to love me. I just said, basically, God, you can have me if you want me. And miracle of all miracles, God said, I want you. I love you. And he forgave me. And the Christmas that I was 16 years old was my best Christmas ever because I understood what it was about. And you know what's been kind of fun is every Christmas after that gets better and better. So now every year gets to be my new best Christmas ever. Because I know, who the, I know this Jesus. I know what it's all about. And so after, as we're coming to the end of 2020, we're in the last month of the year. You might not have noticed, but it hasn't necessarily been the best year. <laughs> uh, you might, I don't know if you caught on to that or not. Uh, you know, you're, we're wearing face masks. Um, we, we had times where we were sheltering in place. Um, you go to the store and there's no toilet paper because people buy you know, it just, it's, been a, it's been a different year. It's been a rough year. There's been a lot of things culturally, socially, nationally, locally, just a lot of hard stuff. But what if in the midst of all of that, what if, and this is one of the things I've been doing all year long, through, through all this season, I keep looking and saying, God, in the middle of a tough year, I know, God, you're still on the throne. I know you still love us. So I'm looking for those, those good moments, those places where God shows up in the course of the year in the course of a day. And when I see those things, I'm able to say, thank you, Jesus. I praise you that you are here. You are at work. And I would encourage you to do that, to pay attention and to notice where God is at work. And so I I began thinking, what, what if through all this crazy season, what if this could become the best Christmas ever? And, and, And here's the thing, it's going to be different, but some of those differences might help us make this a better Christmas. So there'll probably be less parties and gatherings. Some of you remember last year and the year before, you were like, oh, December, there's so many things. I got to go so many places. I got to jam everything into my schedule. And now there's nothing. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's all canceled. You look and you say, nobody called me. Nobody's inviting me over. Nobody loves me. No, you're not saying that. You're saying, man, there's, there's just, it's different. So, so the schedule's opened up. There's less shopping. Maybe online, click, click, click. They send their list. You look at the list. Okay, that hasn't been gotten. Click, but it's not. So less time in stores and shopping. That's, that's different. Here's another different thing. Mistletoe. How many of you remember mistletoe? Okay. It wouldn't even be legal in 2020, even if there wasn't COVID. Because for, the, for you kids, here was the idea. You'd be walking and under a door jam, and somebody hung a little piece of like leaves and a little plant, and that gave people permission to kiss people they didn't know. Now you'd have to like sign a contract, take your mask off. It would be a really different world, right? I'm not saying that was a good thing, but that was, it used to be this thing, that's gone, right? All, every, the pace is slower. But, but let's just pause for a minute and think about this. Maybe 
maybe with less shopping and less running to the malls and less parties, less mistletoe and other stuff, maybe we slow down and think to ourselves, what is this about? Why do we celebrate Christmas? And the answer is Jesus. And sometimes I think in the busyness of life, Jesus gets lost in all the busyness. And we're supposed to be celebrating his birth, and we don't even invite him to the party. I mean, it's his birthday party. And he might be an afterthought, but maybe this year, starting today, kicking off, this night of worship, we turn our hearts and we say, Jesus, let this be the Christmas that I re remember who you are. My eyes turn towards you. My mind thinks of you. I'm not distracted with all the craziness, but I settle down and I say, I know what this is all about. So how do you have the best Christmas ever? I think you keep your eyes on Jesus. Let me just give you a few thoughts here, all right? The best Christmas ever is when God shows up. You want to have a great Christmas? Let God be part of it. Jesus Christ was God in a bod, God in human flesh, God with us. So in the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verses 1 and 2, this is John's Christmas story. It really is. In Luke, it's, 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 he tells it from a very different perspective. They're both true, but they're told different ways. Here's John's Christmas story. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. That's John's, the beginning of John's Christmas story. Jesus Christ was the Word. And the Word was eternally with God. And the Word was God. When Jesus entered human history, it was God showing up. So, so let me ask you a question. Will you invite God to be with you through this whole Christmas season? Will you say, God, this, this, this whole month of Christmas? And Shoreline, we're kicking off a, we're kicking off a all, all December series called Adore. And we're going to just celebrate and adore Jesus Christ all month long. Because it's his birthday. We're celebrating him. But, but what if you said, God, I invite you to be with me all through this season? If you, were, if you were having a Christmas party, who would be the first person you would invite? Well, it should be Jesus. It should be God to be there with you. But I hope you do that every moment and every day. Would you just quiet your heart right now, wherever you are, and would you, would you just in your own heart, would you whisper, God, be with me every day of the month of December and beyond. Would you pray, God, help me notice when you're with me instead of rushing by. God, let the slowness of this Christmas not depress me, but draw me to you. God, may I notice your presence. Pray that prayer. God, let me notice you every moment because God, his name is Emmanuel, which means God with us. If you pray that prayer, if you start your mornings each day, Lord, let me notice when you're around me. Let me, <coughs> let me see you with me. He will hear that prayer and he will answer that prayer. How do you make it the best Christmas ever? You want to have the best Christmas ever? Realize this, that all our wrongs, all your wrongs, all your sins, all your mistakes, all that is washed away. That's the story of Christmas. Jesus came to wash us clean, to wash away our wrongs. The things that we shouldn't have thought that we thought anyways, Jesus washed them away. The things that we said that we wish, you know, you know the times you speak and after you say it, you're like, Ah, I want to grab the words and like pop them back in my mouth. I didn't, I shouldn't have said that. And, and yet there they are, they're out there. Those are washed away. The things that we did that we shouldn't have done, that we wish we hadn't have done, or maybe the things we did that we were so mad, we're glad we did at the moment, but afterwards we thought, what did I do? Jesus says, I wash all that away. I wash you clean. In the Gospel of Luke, in the first chapter, and it's a long chapter, there's this, there's this passage where we're kind of being pointed to Jesus, the Messiah, the one coming into the world, the one who John called the Word. So Luke is telling his version of the story. And he's talking about uh, John the Baptist who's going to come and point the way to the Savior, to the Messiah, to Jesus. So listen to these words from Luke chapter 1, beginning in verse 76. And it's first talking about John the Baptist. And this is Zechariah, his father, who's talking about his son, who's then going to point the way to Jesus. So there's three people involved here. John the Baptist's father, Zechariah, 
talking about a son who's going to point the way to Jesus. So Zechariah says, and you, my child, will be called the prophet of the Most High. He's talking about John the Baptist. For you will go on before the Lord, before Jesus, to prepare the way for him, to give his people the knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of their sins. I love this. Because of the tender mercy of our God, by which the rising sun will come to us from heaven to shine on those living in darkness, in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the path of peace. He will come and bring forgiveness of sins. You want to have a good Christmas? You want to have the best Christmas ever? You remember this, that God who came among us, Jesus Christ, born humbly in the manger, the word of God, he came to wash you clean. And if you're a Christian, your sins are washed away. When God Almighty, the Holy God of Heaven, looks at you, He says, what sin? There's no sin. Why? Because of Jesus. If you're not yet a Christian, understand, He offers you forgiveness. He's ready to wash all your sins away, not by your goodness, but by the goodness of Jesus Christ. That's the story of Christmas. That's how you make it the best Christmas ever. So here's a question for you. Will you seek His salvation this Christmas or rejoice because you already have it? Just in your heart right now, very quietly, let me ask you this question. Have you come to the cross and received the grace of Jesus? Have you asked him to forgive you? And if you have, listen closely. All your sins, past, present, and future, are gone. That's what Jesus does. That's what makes Christmas a Merry Christmas. And if you haven't yet received Jesus... Understand that Jesus stands with his arms reached out, his nail-pierced hands, and he says, I will give my forgiveness to anyone and anyone who wants it. I will not force it on you, but I will offer it to everyone. And it is an astounding thought. I was just talking with a couple before the service tonight, and, I was thinking, and we were talking about this. It is an astounding thought that God would offer salvation to anyone. But how much more astounding that he offers it to, ev <coughs> to everyone. I'm going to sip a little bit of water here. Um, it's, it's amazing that God would offer salvation to anyone, but he offers it to everyone, and everyone who asks God to save them through Jesus Christ will be washed clean, all their sins washed away. You want to have a Merry Christmas? Remember that your sins have been washed away. You want to have the best Christmas ever? Remember that hope was born. If you need hope right now, and, I, and as a pastor, I talk to a lot of people, and a lot of people are feeling discouraged, and a lot of people are feeling a lack of hope. Maybe not hopeless, but not terribly hopeful. And Jesus offers hope. In Luke chapter 1, beginning in verse 29, we read these words. Mary was greatly troubled at, the, at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. This is this angel who's speaking to her. But the angel said to Mary, do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. Even the name Jesus means God is salvation. You are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and listen to this, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. His kingdom will never end. If you're willing to say that with me, his kingdom will never end. Everyone here and at home too, say it with me. His kingdom will never end. We get so nervous and anxious about who's in charge. Who's in charge of a, of a state? Who's in charge of a county? Who's in charge of a nation? We get nervous, and, and we should pray about that. We should be involved in that. But at the end of the day, we know who's in charge. And we know whose kingdom will never end. Even if your person gets in charge in the United States, they have four years or eight years. His kingdom will never end. Kings and queens might reign for a lifetime. But for Jesus, his kingdom will never end. That's the hope we need, an eternal hope, the hope of Jesus Christ. So here's the question. How can you receive and share the hope of Jesus this Christmas? 
Can you say, Jesus, I want to receive the hope that only you can offer? Because he offers hope beyond our wildest imaginations. Where do you need hope in your life? Will you say, Jesus, bring your hope? Where are you feeling anxious? Jesus, bring your hope. Where are you looking and saying, the future is uncertain? Jesus, bring your hope. You want to have the best Christmas ever? Put your hope in Jesus. You want to have a miserable Christmas and any other time? Put your hope in anyone else. <laughs> anyone else. If they are your hope, they will let you down. I can't put my hope in myself. I'll let myself down. I love my wife. I don't put my, wife, my hope in my wife. I put my hope in Jesus. And if you do that, you will find that you can have not only the best Christmas ever now, but year after year after year after year. And so, so we can tell that story. I want to give you a word of encouragement tonight for all the women that are here. If you know someone, you have someone in your life who doesn't yet know Jesus, and you love them and you care about them. We have, we have 100, we, we made, our women's ministry made 300 of these. They call them boxes of hope. And I think they spent about $30 per box, and they're trying to recoup some of the costs for $16. And those boxes, which you can order online and pick up right over here in the parking lot over here, right after the service. If you haven't done it, ordered them yet, you can pick up one or five or ten tonight. There's only 100 left. When they're gone, they're gone. But if, when someone opens this box, you give it as a gift to them. And it has wonderful gifts, and there's, there's a towel, and there's, I mean, there's all, I mean there's, you can go online and see all the stuff that's in the box. But there's also a book called, called uh, The Case for Christmas, written by Lee Strobel, a friend of this church and a friend of mine in Sherry's, about what Christmas is about. And there's also a link where anyone can click on it, go on their computer and click on it, and they can hear the Christmas story, the greatest story of hope ever shared. And it's actually my wife, Sherry, telling that story in such a beautiful, powerful way that I hope that not just those 300 people who get that box watch it, but I hope that every single person who wants to can just tell their friend, go online and watch this, because it's the simple story of the hope of God, the hope of Christmas, the hope of Jesus. And so if you want to give a gift to someone this year that would just be a gift to share the hope of Jesus, I encourage you before you leave here tonight to go over there and they'll explain to you how to go about doing that. But, but share, that, share that gift of hope with someone else. The best Christmas ever. How do you have the best Christmas ever? You, you have peace in the storm, peace in the tough times. Luke 2.13 says this. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace to those on whom his favor rests. Peace to those on whom his favor rests. Who does God's favor rest on? Here's the answer. You, and you, and you, and you, and you. His, his favor rests on you. Do you need any peace this Christmas season? Has there been any turmoil around you, around our world? All kinds of turmoil. Find your peace in Jesus. The angels, the angels declared this as Jesus entered human history. And on earth, peace to those on whom his favor rests. And then one more thought. If you want to have the best Christmas ever, Know that there's light in the darkness. Even as this courtyard was dark and, and Sophie pushed the little plunger here, and I'm not really good with math, but I look around over that wall there, all these trees, all, you know, look up here, and I'm sure there's, there's more than at least 12 to 15 lights in this courtyard. Maybe 100, maybe thousands, I don't know. But there's something about light in a dark place. There's something that, that brings a sense of comfort and encouragement and, and, and so we read these words in the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verses 6 to 9. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. That's John the Baptist. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light so that through him all might believe. He himself, John the Baptist, was not the light. He only came to point to, to point out, to be a witness to the light. Listen to this. The true light that gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming, and we know he has come. That is Christmas. You want to have a great Christmas, the best Christmas ever. Whatever darkness you experience, would you just say this prayer, Jesus, shine your light. Maybe the darkness is in your heart. Jesus, shine your light in my heart. Maybe the darkness is in your home. Jesus, shine your light in my home. 
Maybe it's around you in society. Jesus, shine your light. Would you pray faithfully, Jesus, shine your light? And here's the crazy part. Jesus says he's the light of the world, and then he says to you and me if we're Christians, and oh, by the way, you're the light of the world. Because his light reflects off of us. We don't have light to give, but just like the moon doesn't have any light, but there, you know those nights where you look up and the moon just looks giant and glowing, and you go, man, look at, look at the, the moon shine. No, it's the sun shining off the moon. Stay near Jesus, and his light will shine off you. And Jesus, who is the light of the world, will make you the light of the world. So, how can you light, how can you shine the light of Jesus in this coming month? I'm going to give you just like the rapid fire. This is the bonus round. Just a couple of ideas. How do you shine the light of Jesus? Make an invitation. Invite somebody to a church youth group. Invite somebody, you know, invite somebody. Something's happening at the church where we're talking about Jesus. Invite somebody into your home where they can hear about the love of Jesus. Give an invitation. How do you shine the light of Jesus this Christmas season? Give a smile. Look at someone. Grab your mask. Lower it for a moment. And make sure there's no police around. And then smile at another human being. Remember when we used to look at people and smile at each other? Remember that? Remember those days? I do that sometimes. I'll be someone, I'll just, I'll just, I'll just say, hey, listen, I, I said to somebody, can you just pull your mask down for me? I said, I just wanted to see your face. I, I smiled, and I kept six feet, six feet away, and I sprayed them off with sanitizer afterwards, but I, just, I gave them a smile, right? Smile at somebody. You can still do that. Tell your story. In a moment, you're going to hear the story from two people who are having their best Christmas ever. And they're going to share a story with you. But tell the story about how Jesus has changed your life. Tell his story. The simple story that there's a God who loves you. He came to Bethlehem. He was born in a manger. He gave his life on a cross. He died for us and he rose again. The simple story of Jesus shines his light in the world. How do you shine the light this Christmas season? Hold a door. Hold a door for someone. And just, just step aside. Hold a door. And as they walk by, just say this. Say, Merry Christmas. God bless you. That's still legal in America. You can do that. And you know what most people will say to you? They'll go, oh, thank you. And maybe they'll pull their mask down and smile. And you can smile back at them. But hold a door for somebody. Be a good neighbor. Go on Shoreline's website where it says good neighbor. And follow those steps to share, shine the light of Jesus right where you live. Be a good neighbor. Bring some groceries. We have a food pantry back here, and we are feeding thousands and thousands of people who are hungry right now. Every Tuesday, every Thursday, people are lining up, and, and we're giving them food. Bring, go on the website, find out what groceries we need, and bring a bag. Next time you go to the store, get an extra bag or two, bring them here. And as you do, just pray, Lord, shine your light. Because you know, every person who comes for food, we ask them, can we pray for you? And we look for an opportunity to let them know that there's more than just food, but Jesus loves them too. And we share his story if they're open. We don't force it on anybody, but we make it available. Give your best gift to Jesus this Christmas. It's his birthday. I'm going to be talking about this on Sunday. But your first gift at Christmas time should be the one whose birthday it is. So find a way to give a gift to Jesus. Number nine, send a Christmas prayer on your email or on your phone. Text, write a prayer, text a prayer. I sent out, I sent out a Thanksgiving prayer to a, a bunch of my friends and just shared a prayer that God put on my heart. And I can't tell you how many people responded back and said that meant so much that you shared that simple Thanksgiving prayer. Write a little prayer for, for, for Christmas and send it to five friends, 10 friends, 15 friends, and let God bless them through that. And then read the Christmas story with your family around Christmas time, with kids, with grandkids. If you have other family members that are with you, if you gather with other people, open the Bible, read the Gospel of Luke, the first couple of chapters, and just sit down and remember what it's all about. I believe this could be your best Christmas ever. I think it should be. And so I want to invite uh, a couple of friends, and uh, I want to invite Ruby and Erisbeth uh, to come and join me. And we're going to kind of move, going to get you a stool right here. Come on up here and join me, ladies. And thank you, Ben. And I, they have just a beautiful story, and, uh, and I want them to have a chance to share it with you. And so this is not something that they uh, called and begged me to do. I, we, we asked them if they would be willing to share a little bit of their story. And so, um, and so just, just so that people know uh, who they're talking to, Ruby, would you wave at everybody? Okay, and Erisbeth, would you wave at everybody? And so I just want to talk with them. And let them I'm going to talk with them, but you listen over my shoulder and hear some of their story and why this, I believe, will be their best Christmas ever. And so, uh, Ruby, I'll ask you first, do you, do you remember when you became a Christian? Yes, um, January 26th here in Charlotte. 
January 26th here at Shoreline this year. Yes. Okay, and Eris Beth, when did you become a Christian? I also became a Christian on January 26th here on Shoreline. Okay, and uh, how do you two know each other? So um, many people think that we're sisters, but we're actually mom and daughter. So. <laughs> and so the two of you on the same day prayed to receive Jesus. Yes. Yeah, and so Ruby, would you just tell us a little bit about what... You had heard about Jesus before. You'd been around church some, but, but on January 26th this year, so this is your first Christmas that you, in your heart that you know Jesus, and so it's very exciting, but what, what was it that day that kind of made you say, now it's time? What happened? Uh, well, for the last 14 years, I have been a single mom of three kids, mm -hmm. so I got tired, overwhelmed, mm -hmm. doing it everything by my own, so I decided to become in a commandment with Jesus. And let him walk on my side. Yeah. And start behaving like a daughter of God. Yeah. And just do my best um, to show families and friends with actions that Jesus it was part of my life. Yeah. So on that morning, uh, as I do a lot of times here at Shoreline, I said, if you want to receive Jesus today, I want to invite you to say a prayer. And you'd heard that before, but that day, what happened inside? I mean, what was happening in that moment that, that was different than other times? Um, my heart started beating like in a way that I cannot explain it. Yeah. And at that moment, I heard that voice like where this boy was telling me, okay, enough is enough. Now you're mine and let's do it. All right. Yeah. Okay. And Erisbeth, you were there in the same service and you heard the story of Jesus, that God loves you, that he, Jesus was born in Bethlehem. He came, he lived a perfect life. He died on the cross for you. And what happened in you that made you say, today's the day I want to receive Jesus? So um, I, since long before, my mom introduced me to oh, to Jesus, and it. I especially when I was younger, I look. I looked up to him because when my parents separated, I was really hurt, and so I immediately thought, God, I'm gonna go to God and pray to Him how I'm feeling. And um, so that day when Pastor Kevin was inviting people to go down, I, I was like, you know what? God has always been there for me in the good and the bad. When I'm sad, he is yeah. there for me and I could feel him right there next to me. So I was like, why not? And um, my mom was also planning to do the same. So I'm so happy that both of us were able to share that special moment together. Beautiful. And so Ruby, tell me, so then when you prayed to receive Jesus, and that, was, and that was before all this COVID stuff. And, and so uh, you now have had almost, almost a year you've been walking with Jesus. Just give a, a little picture. How has your life changed as you walk with Jesus now? Well, you know how it feels when the... Okay, so before accepting Jesus, you know when the sun is hitting your eyes, it's kind of bothering when you're driving and mm -hmm. you're trying to see what is forward. Well, now that I have Jesus walking on my side, it's like having my shades... <laughs> and I could see everything clear. Yeah. That's, that's how I feel. A new perspective on everything. Yes, yes. That's a good picture, isn't that? I love that. A whole new perspective. Yeah. And Aris Beth, how has your life changed since you put your faith in Jesus? So for me, I love this question because ever since I decided to finally um, commit to Jesus, I feel so, I feel so much more happy. Um, my, I'm not in communication with my father here on earth, but just knowing that I have God as my heavenly father is just the best gift. And I always tell myself, what better father can you have? Whenever I wish I could have my, father, my dad have a relationship with my dad, I think, you know what? It's okay. You may not have a relationship with your dad, the one who um, is here on earth, but you do have one with God, and that's what matters most. And as I listen to your story, you both knew about church and you both came to church and you knew about Jesus. But at that moment, just you said yes to, to being his daughter. And I think of this picture that you're, that you're mother and daughter, but at that moment you became sisters because you're both daughters of the living God. And you, are, you walk together in faith now, which is such a beautiful thing. So, so this Christmas, you're having, I think about my first Christmas that I knew who Jesus was. And I, I didn't know, I, I knew about Jesus, but I didn't know what it was, and I look at the two of you, this is your first Christmas 
that you're going to walk into this Christmas season with Jesus in your heart and in your life. And so uh, how is this Christmas going to be your best Christmas ever? How's it going to be different this year? Um, well, first of all, like, it's going to be our anniversary. Yeah. And, <laughs> and for me, it's like a big blessing because other years, like, I was like, oh, it's Christmas. You know, I was raised where you marry and you're until dead with your partner. So other times I was like, oh, I have my three kids with me, but I'm missing that the father figure. Yeah. Well, this time I don't, I'm not going to feel like that because I have God as my father yeah. and Jesus yeah. who has been my partner yeah. and walking on my side. And it's like the best gift. Yeah, You're never yes. alone. No, I'm not yeah. alone. And yeah. I mean, like during shelter in place, I mean, like, we didn't feel that it was, like, something to be concerned about. Yeah. Uh, we focus more in the positive of it. Yeah. And we're keeping ourselves like that. Yeah. So your the whole life has changed and Christmas. And so, Aris Beth, for you, what when you think about this Christmas, how will this Christmas be different than the past now that Jesus lives inside of you and you love him? Yeah, so... This Christmas, it's not, for me, it won't be only about gifts. It'll also be about knowing that it's Jesus' birthday, and that's beautiful because he's the one who changed our lives. So just knowing that, it's very meaningful to me, and um, I'm very excited. So I want to pray for the two of you, and I want to pray for all of us. Lord Jesus, we want to thank you uh, for Ruby and for Aris Beth for, for, for January 26th this year right here in this place. There's churches all over the world and you, and you move in hearts and lives, but here you drew this mother and daughter into your presence to put their faith in you, Jesus. Their lives have been transformed. They know your comfort. They know your presence. They know your care. They know your love and your grace. And Lord, we, we're inspired just listening to their story. And so Jesus, we pray together right now for the two of them that they will have their first best Christmas ever knowing you. But we pray for all of us who have faith in you that this Christmas would be our best Christmas ever because we are with you and we love you and you know you love us. Let us celebrate you. And even now as we prepare to sing and to worship you, hear our hearts and launch us into this Christmas season passionate about worshiping you. We pray this in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. and can we thank them for sharing their story with us? Thank you both.